when you a successor, when you following somebody and you succeed somebody or somebody that sees you that you follow was a man of God, then you get the du you get double the inheritance. So you got to just estimate the blessings of the Lord right now is at an all time high automatically by fact. And if whoever was to receive the blessings of the Lord already got an infinite treasure. But I mean, just to count it up would be crazy because it's a double up every time. So if we look at in the case of Elisha and Elijah, as soon as Elijah left, he left his cloak to uh, Elisha. And Elisha was working the same miracles instantly. He worked more miracles than Elijah did. Elisha, the student of Elijah, you know. Then Moses crossed the Red Sea. Immediately, Joshua crossed the Red Sea. After, after, you know. No, I'm sorry. He didn't cross the Red Sea. He crossed the Jordan. Jordan River. Just in the same fashion that Moses crossed the Red Sea. And these are little small things that people don't mention. But Joshua did do that. Now, I could find, I could list the verse in the description in the comments. But basically, we could follow that up that Joshua did cross the Jordan in the same fashion, based on the fact that he was receiving basically a double blessing. It's, it's already a double blessing once he got the promised land. That's how you could automatically say it's a double blessing because the situations they was in. Moses just came out, even though Moses was a king, Moses was the king of Cush. You know, Moses was the king of Cush. Moses married into another kingdom with Jethro. Then he came the leader of Israel. They had no king, and he was basically the man who was interpreting from God. So he was their leader, leader king, if you want to look at it. The Bible even say, are you not, aren't you, aren't you just... The, the Lord see us like Cush, the nation of Cush. He was talking to Israel. He was talking to people who believe in the Lord, to those the upright, the people who follow him. He said, ain't you, he said, ain't you just like Cush? And when he was saying that, he was saying, Moses had already led Cush into victory against Balaam. Balaam is an instrument of the devil too, but Moses had already led Cush in a battle against them. So that was one reason that that has a good significance in the Bible where it say, or you know, different than Cush. Do we see that the Lord took, and then Cush was obedient to Moses. They got him up out of there because he wasn't their people. But Cush was obedient to Moses, and they listened to what he, what he said, do, and they did it, and they overcame, and they got their kingdom back. And then Moses ended up getting up out of there, but he got up out of there in peace with them. It was Jethro that, that, that put him in, in, in jail for the 10 years or whatnot. But, you know, he also gave him his daughter to marry in the end. And, you know, we can go deep into who Jethro is and all this. But at the same time, we only want to just go off off the point of Moses was a king, ended up dying right outside the desert or at the edge of the desert where he could see the promised land but couldn't enter it. Then he passed on the blessing, which was a double blessing to Joshua, you know. So when I say Joshua was reclothed, well, I know what the clothing is now, but the clothing could be met, like everything has different levels. So in the, I don't know. I don't want to go too high, but I know that the clothing is all pure light. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's clothing of light. It's, it's a light body. It's, it's pure. Like, I don't know. I'm not trying to compare this to no, uh, the, no, no study or no, um, terms already used. When I say light body, I'm just thinking of a body like silver surfer, but not silver, but made of pure light. You know what I'm saying? So I believe Joshua has that. So that's what it says he got. So the Lord clothed him in that because of his body. You know what I'm saying? The body is material anyway. So the Lord clothed him in that. So Joshua is all powerful at that point, but I don't want to disrespect God because he's not God. You know what I'm saying? Jesus himself said, it's my father who is a teacher who is the only person that could be called good. I know that for a fact. I don't know exactly where it said, but I know the Bible say that Jesus himself said, only my father is good, showing you a distinction, but also later also in the Bible, in another spot, also showing you that in the spirit, he was his father. 
you know, because when we got the spirit in us, then we are represent. That's not even us speaking. And it, it depending on how strong you are to understand it will be when you feel like, man, that wasn't even me talking. Some people not even strong enough to understand it. And God's still going to speak to them anyway. If he needs to speak to somebody else, do you? But it's some of us who enough for word to be like, that wasn't even me. That was God. And those are people who probably in touch. But the word also says that the prophetic is for the believers and the signs and the wonders is for the non-believers. So them signs and wonders is to make you realize. And then once you realize and you can hear that anybody could have the word of the Lord and just even a bum on the street could be basically not just saying that that'd be God, but you should treat it like it's God because it's the, if it's an angel in it or angel there or angel in this situation for you, or if it's an angel in on the, in, on the, high, in the edge of the highway to be there, then that might be an angel that's judging you based on how you sit there at that light and look at him. And you might be put in the right position to be able to help him with some change and everything and the soul that you can give away and you don't do it. But back to the blessing, you know what I'm saying? The double blessing, it, 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 it went on. Like Abraham was already blessed beyond measure. You know what I'm saying? Abraham was blessed beyond measure, but you see Jacob was blessed beyond measure. Jacob just kept doubling up and like with Laban and all everything. Esau, he was just doubling up. So on top of what he ended up grabbing from Isaac, which ended up being everything that belonged to Abraham and Isaac. So that was, you know, he like the blessing is at an all time high. You know what I'm saying? The treasure at an all time high, the lottery at an all time high. And this lottery is just inherited. And we all inherited it that because the ultimate treasure is the Holy Spirit. So if you want the blessing, if you felt like somebody else end up, oh uh, man, God gave it to him. Well, you know what? If you want to be honest, then the only treasure is the Holy Spirit. So you can't be jealous because you can have it yourself. So God didn't just give it to somebody else. He ain't just make it, you know, like, okay, well, he going to make this person a leader. After Jesus left, he left the Holy Spirit for everybody. He asked God to do that, and he left the Holy Spirit for everybody. He knew that God would want to do that. It's just that, you know, God, Jesus played his role, too. If you notice, Jesus played his role. Jesus left us double. You know what I'm saying? We instant, Paul and them didn't, didn't go through what Jesus went through. or They weren't who he was to have his... Peter, uh, uh, John, they weren't who he was to have the powers he had. That's a double of the blessing. So as we see, when you inherit the blessing from somebody that's a person of God and you succeed them and they precede you and you follow them to a T, then you like Elisha and Elijah, like Joshua and Moses, like Jesus and the apostles, you obey, Jesus said you'll be able to do greater things than me. That's a double of the blessing. And it's not no disrespect to the Lord. So we got to look at it that we got like the prophets and the spirits that's here. People are acknowledging who they are. And the spirit of the Lord is very present and very alive. And the spirit of judgment is alive. And I thought the day of the Lord is within a thousand years. The Lord going to reign for a thousand years. So you got to understand that too. The Lord going to reign for a thousand years. So you can see the turnover. And of course, it's going to be un, 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 um, comfortable to the people who are the kingdom of darkness because you don't have to know that you are the king of darkness because darkness is ignorance. So how most people who are ignorant, you don't know they're ignorant. You got very few people that say, I'm ignorant. I, don't, I ain't planning on learning nothing. But some people might just be caught on the wrong idea. But the, the kingdom of darkness is about to be illuminated by the truth. And then if you can't stomach the truth, you got to be baby feeding yourself up until this point to start being able to accept the truth and knowing how to discipline yourself and move with respect and be around God. And being around God is like being around your neighbor perfectly, like with, with all peace and all love. So if you can't be around the people on earth, including other races, including, no, nah, not including people who uh, don't follow the will of God, but if other races and, and people who are not like you, but follow the will of God. If you're not comfortable doing that, you're not going to be comfortable dealing with God because God ain't like somebody. You feel me? He made us all different. So Jesus is like God. The rest of us ain't like God. You feel me? He has one begotten son. So I ain't being funny, but we all got a double blessing and we should take that. But he got one son. So nobody knows but the truth. But we know, I know one thing. If your heart's truly broken and you humble yourself to God and pray and admit all you going through and, and, and tell him that, you know, ain't nobody can save you but him and ask him to help you. He'll immediately help you then. 
And that's one way to get the help of God and to know that God is real.